Okay. Want to uh, show you guys? <clears throat> Basically, when I've been doing these capacitor discharge experiments, how it was explained to me by master engineers and everything is that this capacitor is filling up with direct current high voltage energy and then it's discharging and I would be discharging it into different uh, into different uh, things like light bulbs and whatnot but what I realized is that we're not discharging any of this energy into a load this energy is being discharged in the spark gap there and each time that it does it allows the high voltage from from uh, the transformers okay to flow across into the load okay so let's let's turn this on okay so this is just this is just connected here through uh, this relay and I have it closed so we have uh, you know 44 44 watts okay but none of the capacitor is discharging through there okay if I did discharge it through there it would create a kinetic force that would blow the light bulb up okay <clears throat> all that is is just the high voltage from there okay and we're not getting any charge in the capacitor because there's no potential it's the potential that fills up the capacitor if it's if it's energy that's flowing right over and past it uh, it doesn't ever give it uh, a vector into the capacitor so when we take it off okay turn it on okay we're getting up here, let's see that sound, that light, see those things flying off, that's, you know, metal part particles flying off of there. Okay, that's, this energy from the capacitor is purely kinetic. It's, it's only good for, for something kinetic that you have to do in between these two spark gap, such as, you know, uh, maybe uh, detonating some fuel in a uh, in a cylinder uh, that might be uh, you know a uh, more efficient way to do that but the the energy uh, that pulses through here you can you know we can put our light bulb on there all it's doing uh, is it's just allowing the high voltage to jump across and ride the electrostatic wave. But the electrostatics isn't good for anything else but kinetic movement. And uh, just like I've been de demonstrating, you know, the, the, the way that the, um, the two pieces get sucked together um, and the way that the, the oil spins around when, only when the capacitors are charged up there. Right? So it's only a kinetic movement related directly to gravity so it's the coupling of electrostatics and, and gravitational forces um, you're just giving it an environment in which gravity can can you know manifest itself um, and so I've been trying to you know turn this into uh, back into electricity and I'm realizing it's you know it's, it's it has another purpose it's it's for kinetic movement. Uh, it's not necessarily for needing electricity. I mean, we could we can build a motor based on the you know the coupling of electrostatics and gravity that you know uh, is turned by the dynamic movement of the charge of the charge potential without you know draining any of the capacitor. You just switch it on every now and then to, to get it kicking again, to kickstart it again. Uh, and I've shown, those, shown that in previous videos. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's uh, the electromagnets, the, the electromagnetic portion of it is, you know, it just goes 
in one ear and out the other, just like they've been telling me. But uh, and that's as far as the explanation goes, because they're only educated in electromagnetic engineering, not you know the coupling of electrostatics to gravity and and dynamic movement. I mean, it's a totally different science, even though we're using electromagnetism to get a reaction of electrostatic charge which then gets a further reaction of the gravitational field uh, once the electrostatic field is set up. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's why we're getting different effects when we're using charged capacitors such as the material disappearing and reappearing right in front of your eyes. Some people say it's the camera frame rate but if they're going way outside of here and they're appearing I've seen I've seen where the pieces of glass they'll they'll disappear and then reappear and then disappear and then reappear for the camera frame rate but what happens when they disappear and then then they appear over here right in front of your eyes and on camera so that debate needs to be settled by a high speed camera uh just the expense of it has kept me from being able to prove that without a without a shadow of a doubt that we're, the atoms are being accelerated past our visible light spectrum and are then moving electrostatically or electrogravitically uh, to you know, wherever their destination is, uh, which studying that, you know, what governs w what their movement is <clears throat> once they're charged, uh, be interesting. Maybe it's coupling to gravitational bodies, who knows? But, uh, yeah, so this, this all is not for, you know, getting, uh, even though the kinetic force is, is free because you're, we're technically not using anything but pulses of this energy. So, uh, you know, the cost of this is very cheap electromagnetically, um, and we're getting, a, you know, a very tremendous force out of here. I mean, that, that itself combined... Uh, you know, probably with with a little bit of argon or something, that itself can become its own uh, piston movement, and you wouldn't need you know exhaust gases because you could just ionize and expand the pressure in the cylinder, and uh, and then it would the <clears throat> the energy would stop and the pressure would go back down. So it would be no need to, uh, you know, burn any gases. <clears throat> you just ionize and use the pressure, the electrostatic pressure, which is basically, you know, it's it's the Lorentz force that's like the Casimir force in between the the capacitor plates. You know, you, you got the uh, organic and inorganic material there, like orgone, the dielectric and the electrically conducting material, pressed together in, you know, ultra-thin la layers and wrapped around together. Um, so, you know, that right there, you know, brings the Casimir force into play, which is a kinetic force. So if we're, we're activating you know, kinetic force with these with the Casimir force in here, and because of the capacity of all the different plates stacked up, we're able to release it all at once. <clears throat> and uh, you know, there's no ground here; it just releases across itself. You know, it's not like, the, and they don't stay charged, so the energy gets released; it gets transformed into kin its kinetic force that's getting released. It's just riding the. It's it's just riding, the uh, uh, the high voltage. You know the high voltage is lubricating the whole line. And uh, yeah, because these. Uh, this uh, uh, spark gap, excuse me, the spark gap, it, it also acts as like a radio frequency antenna, you know, it's it's putting out also uh, wireless waves 
that can be picked up. Additionally, that are, that are not a part of the high voltage running through linearly. They're not a part of the kinetic force moving through uh, here. It's another it's another wireless force that gets created from from this dynamic happening, which can be picked up, and that's you know what all of our wireless uh, uh, technology is about. So, um, for example, you know when we turn on when we turn on our detector, it's 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 fifty to a thousand volts uh, sensitivity range. Okay, and <clears throat> we can detect it all the way out here. Okay, to the to the edge of the workspace. So that's power that can be recaptured, right? While we uh, use this load, okay, the the high voltage. While we also use the kinetic force from the capacitor. You know, uh, we're just we're just reacting all these forces off of each other and creating new forces. We're just blending them together. And, uh, you know, getting different effects. And that's what it's all about. Not just electromagnetic engineering, but physics in general. And you, you really have to approach these things from a phys physical viewpoint instead of a theoretical, mathematical viewpoint. Um, and, uh, you know, that's why I'm really glad I never <clears throat> only went to college enough to learn that the math was not making any sense with my experiments and uh, you know, I've been able to open up my mind and my experiment experience to uh, be able to discover these things uh, the the coupling of gravity to different forces um, like uh, electrostatics so uh, yeah that's what I think about that. And you can check out my other vo videos for the demonstrations of the force coming out of the capacitor and uh, the uh, different electrical effects, of the linear uh, movements of the, the electricity through the line, um, different experiments just showing what the different thing, the different aspects of the circuit. Um, so yeah, this is all inspired by Nikola Tesla.